Hello, Jonathan Rainey. Nice to meet you. Welcome to FACE. Everyone doing okay? <clears throat> well, everyone wanted volatility. Be careful what you wish for. Okay, so early in the week, I talked about the dollar. I don't know if it would go back far enough. Eh, forget it. And showed this little island bottom here. And what was interesting uh, was while the market was still selling off, uh, the dollar kept getting a bid. I talked about a target at 61.8, um, overshot it a bit yesterday, playing around with it right here. Um, if it wasn't a Friday, maybe I'd be probing it. You know, this is a nice rally if you're a dollar bear to start considering shorts. Okay, so we'll see what happens up against this week's highs sometime next week. You look at it on a weekly basis, pretty nice candle, right? So almost looks like the kind of candle where it could just blow off to the upside. So next week's going to be important to see if we uh, get some follow through. <clears throat> My best guess is that we don't make a new high and we play around maybe distribute for a few days and start heading back down um equality of this move from around in here is going to take it down to 92 so we'll see what happens and something that was even more stellar with risk continuing to be off and the carnage that we saw until last night look at this uh the end you know took out 104 and a half and cleaned out the flash crash low here and got all the way down to 101 so you know everyone who was long yen was gone and look at where it's closing so is this a false breakdown and uh, was the yen telling us that the bonds had uh, bonds had peaked and rates had bottomed i see steve has a bond short on uh, thought it was in doubt yesterday but Looks like a change. He scored on the short in the bond. I saw it over on Skype. So uh, this is pretty impressive in the end. So we're either going to do the same thing that we did in the dollar and fail between here and 108 and a half and roll over again, because this is actually, you're looking at almost an 1100 pip move and under this would take it down to 90. So here's your monthly and you see it never violated this low but when you look at it, it almost looks like you know we're going to have a blow off in the end like we could have a a blow off in the dollar at least the dollar is the difference is you have a green candle oh you don't on the weekly oh that's the monthly that's why <laughs> my fried all right well you have reversal months going too as long as I looked at it, but there you go. Nice reversal week. Nice reversal week. Blue candles. So with the end, I'll look at it up around this uh, 108.40 if we get there. Remember, 780 was a big pivot for a long time. Also, 980 is a big pivot. So I'm going to give this the benefit of the doubt at least for a week or so. And uh, the dollar's already at 61.8 back. I haven't done the measured move here. It's 11 though, so six back. We're about halfway back in the end. I'll update my FIB. So actually the dollar has a stronger look to it uh, than the end does because we've already retraced 61.8 see we're not that far away from new highs so uh if i were to go with either it would probably be us dollar yen okay uh so gregorius uh boj is expected to act if it hit 106 well in what way and thanks for sharing your ideas in here. We appreciate all of you guys sharing your views. 
I know a lot of you express them. And, you know, every once in a while, we pick up an idea from you guys, too. So keep up the good work, Gregorio. It's a nice call. You know, uh, again, you know, I, I'm sure Blake wants to get going, but I want to leave it on one point, okay? So it's one thing to make a great call. like buying the VIX at 14 or telling people to buy the VIX down here, which I did, and to buy it, and then have an objective up here at 28. And that's a good trade, right? VIX doubled. But where did I miss out? I, it was not a great hold, was it? I mean, huge windfalls on it, historic. That's why you always leave a piece on for the runners, guys. Always leave a piece on, even at your objectives. You never know. Objectives could extend. You never know how, well, you never, you never know how far a rubber band can stretch. Okay, so anyway, a lot of people are saying, and I'm sure the VIX is going to get hit pretty good today, but a lot of people are saying, uh, this isn't like 2008, and right, you know, one was systemic financially, and this is uh, uh, both. First, starting off with, this is systemic too, if you notice what the Fed did. And, you know, uh, the most liquid market for many years when I, you know, was just trading futures was uh, the 30-year bonds and the note. And, you know, what the bid offer would be, be 32nd between the bid and offer. And before the Fed came in, it was a full point bid offer. So the treasury market was not functioning. You couldn't get a trade off. That kind of spread may happen on, in junk bonds, but not in the quality, flight to quality 30 year paper to have a one full point spread between bid and offer to get a trade off. That's a problem. Okay. And you know what? It also reminds me of what happened in the overnight repo market. So, you know what is maybe it's Corona and Corona is, uh, you know, having people close and that's going to have economic impact. But there were things going on before Corona that this is exposing because the system's under stress because no one was hitting the sell button for so many years. Right. So. Here we are, we're exposing market structures and the lack of liquidity in what should be the most liquid contract in the universe. So with that being said, Blake, uh, you're glad to be wrapping up the week here. You know, when I look at this uh, VIX, yeah, um, here was the 2008 high in VIX. I think it was in the 80s. So it may not be like 2008 but the vix doesn't seem to see the difference and with that blake uh what do you think here with this huge rebound and um i you know first of all um i think that today is a recovery day so can you see That's my it. can you see my screen my um yeah dollar max okay yeah yeah so you know i was uh for first and foremost i was just short the dollar max uh, at uh, 2165 and just covered it down here at 43 um just to, like right where we're at this is a head and shoulder pattern so i'm i'm going to be uh playing it on the short side we're limit up in futures and um you know it was interesting Polly Polly said that we um hit a or uh, there was there was all, a bunch of redemptions uh reported overnight which that if you were watching my or if you follow me on twitter um i had said that uh you got you know um uh, classic you know the stock market's up seven percent in europe and all the redemptions hit that that was a you know it was a typical um uh, uh um, capitulation if you will i capitulation i'm going to use that term lightly and loosely today I don't want to say the market's capitulated. I, I want to say the uh, mom and pop has capitulated, which means that they they sold, and obviously stocks are going to bounce uh, here. Now, uh, if you look at 
and let me let me pull up this the index really quick. This is this is the uh, S and P index um, uh, cash index. All right. So you see where we're at. We're at the we closed at the weekly um, trend line. Uh, it's natural that we're going to bounce here. I mean, you know, I, I, I would assume that we bounce and we probably bounce to let, let me just give you a rough estimate here. We went to 24 last night, though, right? We did. We are 2,400. Th this is on not on the futures. This is the oh, cap. Oh, okay. Got it. Y y okay. So a little, little different here. So it so, never happened. Huh? So according to people that use this chart, it never happened. Exactly. To, to, if you watch the S&P cash market when we open, we're going to open up 5% today. So we're going to open up here. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Or somewhere around here. I don't know. Anyway, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, put it past the market for next week that we do, we bounce somewhere to these levels, right? Yeah. Which would be anywhere between 2,700, 2,750 to, you know, 2,850. I, I think that's doable. Um, now, the, there, there obviously is still some risk. I mean, to be blindly long risk right now, uh, you, you, you guys know that um, we're, we're, we're going into the weekend uh, we're testing more here in the United States. The numbers are going to be fugly as we go into uh, this weekend. Uh, there's going to be more panic. Grocery stores are going to be packed. Costco's are going to be packed. Schools are going to be closing. There's going to be, you know, a, a, an acceleration in, um, in, in cases and possibly deaths here in the United States. Well, Plus they're going to lock us in California. Yeah, yeah, you know, Travel we might go into lockdowns certain areas. There's uh, there's yeah. rumors that uh, New York City is going into lockdown. Uh, I'm today. leaving now. Huh? So I don't get trapped. I'm coming over. No, no, don't come here. You're not coming, got, Blake. We got Sun City over here. You you come over here and you're you're, you're damned. <laughs> I'm coming. Yeah. Uh, I'm leaving. See you guys. You're you're damned, right, Blake. I'll the be there people. for I'll be there for happy hour. <laughs> so. <laughs> So that's, you know, that's going to be the big risk. Uh, yeah, you would make it for happy hour, by the way. Um, that, that's the big risk over the weekend is that, you know, to be long risk blindly or to be long risk in general right now is, I don't know if Crazy. that's the right trade. I, I, I think we're going higher from here. But the flip side to that is if we break this trend line, if we, if we get, a, if we start getting like daily closes below yesterday's lows, then we got a problem. And, um, and, and so right now we're seeing a, a bounce in a lot of things. Like I, you know, the dollar yen is, is, is ripping. You, you, you'd mentioned about bonds. L look, the bond market was in, it, it was in the midst of a sell-off midweek this week. Yeah. So we, we were in the midst of a sell-off and we're currently selling off right now. So uh, t the dollar yen, I ex and I told everybody in the chat room this morning, I'm expecting the dollar yen to go 108. It's a 618 okay. retracement. It's, right. it's going to be right here. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where we're going. And Blake, don't you think, I mean, you've been looking at charts for a few decades and trading that long, that after a move like this, even if we are, are going to bottom how much repair and time a market's going to need to uh, do it that we're not going to just have a V bottomed to new highs. It's going to take people selling to stop and accumulation to begin. Yeah. Yeah. We're not going to get a V bottom. I, I, I think that, well, now we're talking, are we talking about dollar yen? Or are we talking about something else? Uh, the S and P's, I mean, all these charts that had, you know, uh, waterfall declines. Oh, we'll have an L shape. You know, I think. all of them. I think we're going to yeah. have an L shape, or, or you know, better, better, uh, better uh, would be you know, like a, like we're going to have um, a pennant type of thing, you know. So it's going to yeah. look something like it's going to look something like this, right? Uh, an L shape um, move, right? Yeah, is what I'm going to stabilize. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna stabilize, and you know, uh, I I think that's what's happening. Um, so just you know, keep that in mind. Uh, I think that's what 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 we're gonna be dealing with uh, moving forward. But uh, before before we break down again, that's that that would be my that would be my thought process here. So with that being said. Um, uh, you know, you just have to be really careful. And like I said, the, the, 
the, the news stream is likely to get worse before it gets better. So that is your risk by being long risk over the weekend. You know, um, you know, you're, you're, you, you know, you, you're, you, I, I would assume, and this is just assumptions here that all the news is going to be bad over the weekend. We're going to gap down and then that's going to give you another opportunity to buy whatever, you know, we're, you know, as a trader, and I'm talking as a trader, you know, not necessarily an investor, um, because I, I think that we are going lower ultimately. The, this virus is not, it's, it, it, any, 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 any vaccine that we have, there's, I, I saw a story and I'm not going to pass it over to you guys because it's not confirmed that, you know, there's, there's some vaccines being worked on. And, but even if there's a vaccine, it's going to be for this next fall. And, you know, it's going to have to run its course this spring and summer. Uh, there, like I said, there's going to be more cases, more deaths. Um, it's going to probably peter out in the summertime. It'll be revived probably with a new strain this fall. And frankly, it's going to weigh on the global economy and, and GDP moving forward. So you got to use, you got to use these, um, these uh, uh, rallies as opportunities to be sellers. Uh, again, you know, where are we going to go? I, I, my, my assumption is somewhere here. And, and just so you guys all very clear, you know, the S&P did complete its pennant formation. So to be short down here doesn't make much sense. So you don't have a whole lot of edge. Let me, let me pull up the four hour chart. You don't have a whole lot of edge at this moment. You know, you, you don't, you, you really don't. So, you know, um, you just, you, it's like, what do you, what do you, what are you going to do here? Are you, do you really want to be long? Do you really want to be short? I think it's a really tough um, question to answer right now. And it's not something that you have to do anything about. And I, and I'm, I'm going to be perfectly frank right now because you have no edge, whether you're long or short, there's nothing wrong with saying, Hey, you know, I've survived this week. I made some money. I lost a little bit of money, but I survived whatever it is. You know, hopefully you had a great week. I had probably one of my best weeks in, you know, six months, but you know, if, if you're, you're not in that camp and let's say you, you just, you got out unscathed or, you know, you lost a little bit of money, but you're, you're like, whew, man, it could have been way worse. It probably could have been way worse. So there's nothing wrong with just being in cash and waiting for a, better trade to develop going into next week, because I think that's where we're at. There, it does, it, it's kind of like the, 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 the uh, situation yesterday, um, you know, uh, that, I, and I tweeted about it. It's like, okay, um, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, cash is a position. Um, I don't feel too comfortable about being on the short side, but I don't really feel too comfortable about being long. So if that's your, if that's your take, then, and so be it. But let's talk about a little bit of some of these currencies. Um, and then I'll take some, I'll address some questions really quick. This reversal in the euro was pretty big. And I think that um, the, 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 the dollar funding issue right now is something that I talked about yesterday, that if the S&P gets down to these levels, the dollar is going to start pivoting as a risk off type of currency. And I think that's where we're at right now. I think the dollar is starting to find that footing. All right. Um, the repo markets are being stretched. The credit markets are being stretched. People are now going, I need dollars. So I think the dollar is in that camp of transitioning into that risk on risk off type of currency. That's important to understand because if the stock market actually does break down from here and let's say we break lows, then, you know, the dollar might be actually more uh, in fuego right? If you will, it's going to be, it's going to be purchased. Um, but that leaves us kind of, uh, you know, wondering what do we do with the Euro right now? And frankly, I'm not really too sure what to do with the Euro. I like the fact that it broke the, 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 uh, 38% retracement, which leads me to believe that we're going lower in the Euro, but let's say I'm, uh, let's say I'm, 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 I'm right. And stocks bounce. Well, maybe the euro does bounce back to 113 first before rolling over. Um, so that's something to think about. Cable's trading really heavy and really bad. I was actually going to short the euro pound this morning uh, because the cable was actually uh, 
trading, you know, when, when I got up this morning, I was like 125.80. We're up here and I'm like, oh man, I missed my Euro pound short because I was going to short it right at the 618. We were, we were here when I woke up. We were here and we had already rejected the 618. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I miss shorting it. But now that we're back above this and the pound looks so heavy, I don't know if I really want to touch it, frankly. I I'm looking at it going, yeah, I don't know. You know, it's not, I don't, I don't know if I really want to deal with the, the cable right now. So the cable is trading heavy and uh, you know, uh, I guess the EU UK talks are pausing right now. And so that's uh, a bit of a problem, you know, for, for, for the UK um, I guess. So anyway, I'm just not dealing with that. Uh, the Aussie, not doing anything. Kiwi's not doing anything. The Canadian, I shorted the Canadian last night. I was watching a movie with my family and I shorted it at uh, uh, 139.35. After the movie, we were at 139, somewhere around here. And I closed it out and I'm like, oh, yeah, I made like 30 or 40 pips or whatever it was, you know, as we dropped around this 139 level. And then I, I, I watched a, a movie with my family and uh, I made 40 pips and I'm like, oh, I'm going to sleep great, great tonight. And then I woke up this morning. I'm like, oh my God, I missed, <laughs> I missed like a hundred pips. But the Canadian, just so you know, one of the Canadian, one of the issues I have with the Canadian right now, well, first of all, technically we hit the 161% extension of this last leg lower. So that's why I was short. Um, I was a little nervous last night because uh, um, Prime Minister Trudeau, his wife tested positive for the coronavirus. So why is that an issue? Because if uh, Trudeau falls ill himself, which is highly possible with the coronavirus, then the risk is that, uh, that, that, that maybe the Canadian currency continues to get hit. So that made me a little nervous about being short. Blake. Yo. Sorry, don't worry. Uh, most politicians don't want to even be close to their wives. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, does that only... Does well, that why does that apply only to politicians? politicians? <laughs> is that only for politicians? <laughs> Just kidding. Um, jo joking, guys. I'm, uh, you know, when you've been with those same women for 20 years. Mm. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait a second. Let me call Lisa. <laughs> hey, no. no. Uh, I, I'll uh, send you a clip of the... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but we we are but no jo jokes aside though. Um, if, if he does fall ill, the Canadian currency could you know continue. I mean, it could get hit. Now he's in good shape, and you know chances of him surviving are high. But still, you know that's a risk being sh long the Canadian. So last night I was like, yeah, I don't want to be long, and I you know I took my profits like a wussy and. Uh, anyway, but you can see why we're at big resistance. I think that the dollar Canadian now is going to be, you know, in this range that you can trade it. You know, it'd be a buyer down here at 137, seller up here at 139 and change and probably trade, trade around this range for now until we figure out what we're going to do. Um, like I said, I, I shorted the dollar max, uh, did, did pretty well with it. It's it already started to bounce. It's starting to bounce aggressively here. And I think I'm you know, hands off unless we break below this uh, 2135. I made, I made, you know, probably one of my better trades of the week, actually just shorting that because you don't need a lot with the dollar MX. Uh, it's, uh, it's moving so wildly that if you have a relatively, um, you know, uh, um, you, you have a relatively small position, you can still do, do well. And that's, kind of the situation I was in with this is I, you know, I didn't take too big of a position, but I've probably had one of my bigger trades of the week profitable wise. So um, yeah, anyway, it, it's bouncing right now, but I think that it, it'll stall around the 2160 level. I just think that as long as stocks stay supported, the dollar Mexican peso will drift lower. This false breakout here from this week is a little uh, risky for longs now. And, and you guys know it's, it, it, it's, a, it's a funding currency. It's very illiquid. So you got to be real careful with it. Um, I, I, Steve, I know you're going to talk about this, but this U S dollar Norwegian Krona, and I'm going to, I'm going to let you talk about it because I know you're trading it. I'm not, but we hit the 261% extension of this last move. This is a, this is a blowout move. And frankly, uh, I wouldn't want to be 
on the long side of this anymore. Um, but, you know, do you short it right here? You know, I'll, I'll let Steve go into that. And Stelios, I'm sure, has something to say about that, too. But, uh, but I think you have to be really, really, really careful with U.S. dollar Norwegian krona um, uh, longs at this stage in the game, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, one last thing I, I want to reiterate about the dollar yen. With bonds looking like they're going to continue to pull back a little bit, that means yields are going to go up. This dollar yen is wickedly uh, a bid. Uh, I would be nervous about any longs as we approach 108, but I think what I was saying in the chat room uh, when we were trading below 107 earlier this morning at like 106.50, 106.80 this morning, I was like, I do not want to be on the I only want to be on the short side of the dollar uh, yen up at 108. And I hope it saved some of our traders in the chat room because even though I wasn't trading it, hope it saved them a few bucks because yeah, this thing looks, it, it was wicked. It's been wickedly strong for the last couple of days. Remember there are natural life buyers in this currency pair. What do I mean by that? There are, is the Japanese, the GPIF, which is the Japanese government, Japanese GPIF, G, uh, Government Pension uh, Fund. Japanese uh, Pension Investment Fund, Blake. There we go. It's the largest inve investment fund in the in the world. They're buyers of the dollar yen. They were buyers at 110. They are probably buyers at 105. They were buyers probably at 102. They've been buyers. They're they're buying, and they're nonstop buying. And it's 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 it's. And, and I think it's actually going to turn the tide for the dollar yen longer term. So for those of you that are like, oh, I think the dollar yen is eventually going to 140. I, 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 I wouldn't disagree with you. Now, not necessarily buying it here because of that, uh, but I think that, um, that we are going to be building a longer term base in the dollar yen. So that's uh, something to think about. Um, I was hoping we'd get a move to 100. That's what I was ultimately looking for. But shoot, I don't know if that's actually going to be able to happen. You know, I don't know. Uh, maybe with the next push lower in equities, if we go down to like 2000, maybe the dollar yen will slump to 100. But I am a buyer somewhere down there. And I'm also a seller, you know, like I said, up at 108. It, it has been very, very well bid. Don't stand in front of this freight train right now, especially if it, you got equities that are limit up. You got the Nikkei that's rallying right now. If you haven't looked at the Nikkei, uh, it's it's ripping. Um, so with the Nikkei moving, the dollar yen tends to move in tandem. So let me pull up the re, 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 where is it? Uh, uh, where is it? Uh, I usually, oh, there it is. So you see the Nikkei is bouncing like a bat out of hell. So yeah, you don't want to be short the dollar yen when this thing's moving higher. So just another um, you know, thing to think about, but, uh, but yeah, so guys, um, before I turn it over to Steve and Stelius and get their thoughts on the U S dollar Norwegian Krona, look, we're in a very volatile environment. If you guys aren't in the chat rooms with us throughout the course of the day, I, I, I don't, I don't know how to help you because uh, I'm only going to be able to give you limited information on Twitter. But if you want to chat with me and the rest, and it's not just me, it's, it's the, you know, I mean, look, all of these traders here and everybody's talking. And uh, since I've, since I closed out my dollar max, closed dollar Mexican peso at 43 from 2165, you know, since I, since I said that, at 508 that was actually 22 minutes ago you can see all the chatting that's going on you know about you know just everything so if you guys if you guys want to be you know where, where we're at and we're chatting all day long you know come hang out with us there but you have to be a member of forex analytics and it's only one dollar for 10 days to try it out and then you have to be a premium subscriber to be part of the chat room but even if you're not even if you're not, you, you, you still, you still have the analysis. It my my intraday analysis and the end of day analysis, basic technical macro, uh, 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 you know, candlestick analysis, even on the light version, it's $19 a month. Plus you have an app that gives you, you know, updates when, when these support and 
resistance levels are breached, when there's a new pattern in play, you know, you get the new, you know, get the data flash. I mean, you get so much for $19 a month it, and we priced it that way because we just want everybody to have access to it. But it does, <laughs> if you guys don't, if you guys think that making apps and constantly updating uh, this platform and all of the features that you see here, whether it's adding tools and all, all other stuff. If you, if you think that that is just free for us to do, it's not, that's why we charge, but it's the, probably the best technology you're going to get for the least amount of money. And we planned it that way. So everybody can have, can, can be involved. All right, guys. Anyway, uh, Steve Stelios, what do you guys feel about this no Norwegian And needless product? to say, some of the best trades are certain in there because not, not all trades are um, appropriate to be put as pattern in place. Oh, no. So, yeah. I, I No, like like today, even though that I, I did update the, um, the, the US dollar Mexican peso with a 15-minute chart showing you the, the head and shoulder pattern, as we are at 2155, that's 1500 pips higher than where we're at right now. So, you know, you, you, you'd already be identified with that, but you don't know if I'm buying or selling because I'm in the chat room and the chat rooms where I'm like doing all my scalping and stuff because yeah, patterns in player, they're, they're like by the book patterns, you know, and it's usually yeah, and better position patterns so more like a bias. Yeah. It's like yeah. a bias, you know, I'm a bias in the, you know, I have a bias in the market, but all of our active stuff is going to be in the chat rooms. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to let you guys take over, but talk about that Norwegian Krona because that thing has been a mover. Oh yeah. All right, guys. Hey, um, have a great weekend, everybody. TGIF and, uh, and, and I won't see you on the daily roundup cause we don't do it on Fridays, but, uh, on the, uh, the week ahead video. I'll see you guys on Sunday. So I'll and, see and you Blake. in 11 hours, Blake. And, Have the and, crown Royal ready. Woohoo. <laughs> Is it beer 30 yet? Oh, by the way, um, I may, I may have Greg O'Horvat do this week. At the, he, he wanted to do last week's week ahead, but I, he might uh, do this week. So you guys might have a little trade. Oh, what off. a treat. The wizard. All right, guys. Have a great Thank one. you, Blake. Thank you, Blake. Thanks, Blake. Thanks. Have a great day. Happy Friday. So, so what do we make of this uh, bounce? I, I'm sure you yeah. guys saw DSI in equities was low single digits, and uh, you know it, it has been. And, and the fear grid index hit one, one. Yes. for the first and, time in history. <laughs> yes. I mean, personally, I always like to look a bit ahead, um, but from what I hear, um, retail is still buying the dip, which um, it makes me worried. Uh, if that wasn't the case, then I would be a little bit more confident. But what I always want to do is what, um, you know, like Formula One drivers, if you look at where, I saw this film uh, once on TV, they, they show where their eyes are looking when they're turning. And, you know, a normal person, you turn in, in and you look at the apex of the corner. They're already looking ahead to the next yeah. corner. So this is what you want to be doing. And I, I was discussing this with a friend of mine that we trade together and uh, he was saying, you know, what do you think is going to happen six months from now, 12 months from now? I said, look, this thing is going to come, it's going to go. Unfortunately, people are going to die. That's really bad. But at the end of the day, we're going to be left with much lower valuations, stocks much lower than where they were a month ago, uh, probably going to drop more, but we are going to have a situation where we have the most stimulus I've seen in my life. They're much bigger than 2008. That anybody has seen in any lifetime, if yeah. you ask me. So you're going to be left in a situation where the money supply and, you know, credit and debt is just going to be, rates are going to be zero. Everything's going to be so easy. Uh, in, uh, I, th I think we, we are starting the, 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 the last part of the game, the end game, Stelio, which is, lethal dosage, because I do believe it's going to be lethal dosage, of um, stimulus um, to, to the economy. So, you know, so far, they think that they've, you know, escaped the repercussions of throwing so much liquidity in the system during the past 20 years and, you know, mostly during, the, you know, the past 10 years. Um, and I think, you know, this is when... Um, you know, uh, the system is going to break. So, well, yeah, the, yeah. The question, I think for me, the big question is with the biggest bubble of them all, which is debt. And what is going to happen with debt? Personally, I don't think, you know, you have the, the Fed owning, you know, trillions of debt and, uh, you know, the BOJ monetizing everything. 
I don't think there's going to be defaults in debt, obviously, in the big, uh, in the big economies like US, uh, Japan, you know, UK. I don't think there's going to be defaults. I think that's near zero probability. But what's going to happen? They're going to keep issuing more and more uh, because they have to. So the end result for me is just a devaluation of currencies. End of story. You know, all my friends are asking me, what should I do? What do you think? What would you be doing? I want to leave something to my kids. I said, just buy Real it. assets. Real assets. End of Real story. Real assets. End of story. Pick whatever yeah. you want. You have 10 grand to spend, buy a really nice rare watch. Or, you know, you have more, buy land. You know, that's what I'm doing anyway. So, um, you know, you're going to have fluctuations. But at the end of the day, when you have money supply increasing so much, and the purchasing power of every fiat currency just I increasing mean, just, just think day. about it. Just the, rep, the repo for these two days is going to be one trillion. <laughs> I mean, it's like, you're like just, talking about yen. <laughs> yeah, just think about it. I mean, we're not talking about one trillion yen. Indeed, we're talking yeah, about yeah, one yeah. trillion dollars. Yeah. So that's my, that's my long-term view. And I think... You know, a year or two from now, markets are going to be much better. Where is the bottom? I have no idea. Uh, you know, it's going to, it, I think we're getting closer to the bottom than we were obviously a month ago, but it, we could go way lower. But in the end, you're going to be left with money, loads of money just sloshing around the system, trying to find somewhere to go. And where, when fear goes away, when fear and greed goes, you know, outside of single digits, <laughs> um, then the, people are going to go back. Uh, looking to get yield, looking to get returns, because as we all know, the market has really no memory. People don't remember, you know, 10 years from now. Yeah, it has a very short mem uh, yeah, yeah. shorter memory, uh, anyhow. Te technically finance. speaking, uh, if you guys, if you pull up the weekly of the S&P and you believe in the megaphone formation, uh, Steve probably has that line on his weekly, uh, it would be off the low in... Um, the end of 18 and then the low in early uh, 19. No, no, no. I, I, I know which, that line. Uh, which line you're talking about. I don't have it on, oh, uh, on my oh, chart because, okay, because generally okay. I, I'm not. All right. Well, know, now you do. Flat. Let me just explain. So we could go yeah. down into this megaphone line. And then if you believe in the megaphone, we could actually go back or broadening top uh, broadening formations can go on for a while. Why can't we go down there and then even rally back to the top of the megaphone? Even the bears like David Brady says the fed will be able to generate one more rally to new highs. That's what megaphones imply. You never know when they're over. So we could go down to 2100, whatever that is. And then, go back to the megaphone and not have a throw over. Yeah, so, 2100. Yeah. It currently is around yeah. 2100. So, I mean, you know, that is a possibility that the Fed is successful one more time because of what you guys are talking about to generate um, one more move back to the upside. Of yeah, that, the that, that would imply an almost 40% lower from the highs, right? Yeah. Uh, 40, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not saying it by being surprised because you know better than almost anybody that I kept saying, "Be careful," because at some point yeah. stocks are going to get ha cut in half, and it's going to happen much faster than you can. You know, you can say bear market. Not even you thought it would happen this fast. No, the, uh, I mean. It's unpredictable how fast it will happen. Right. And, right. and we've said many times that you know. The usual adage that you know, up with the escalator, yeah. down with the elevator, you know, proves to be the case every time. Yeah, down is speaking, speaking of bear markets, you remember this pitchforks, Andrew Pitchfork that I was talking about again and yeah. again. And when we were up there, I said that listen, this is the first overthrow we have, you know, with conditions being what they are. And look at this within four weeks, we went from above the 200% extension to much below the 200% extension to the downside. So, you know, that tells you everything you want to know. Is that a, yet, an impulsive move? <laughs> mm, uh, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, at yesterday's lows, uh, people that were buying, let's say, February 2017, found themselves back in the money. So if you bought back in 2017 and you held on to your positions for that long, 
yesterday night, the only thing you had left was dividends, nothing else. And that happened within less than four weeks. Yeah. So what does that tell you about a market that does that? You know, a lot of people are using the stupid excuse, which is coronavirus. Coronavirus is a huge disruptor. There is no question about it. But remember what we've been saying again and again. Every bubble eventually finds its break. And if the repo was, market problems were way before oh, yeah. Corona. Oh, yeah. You know? oh, yeah so, absolutely. I mean, there was already issues, and the Fed was already coming in with what they didn't want to call QE. So uh, the markets weren't functioning before this. Of the course point. they weren't, because, because we don't have real markets since many years ago. There is no price discovery anymore. Um, listen, for those that don't understand, uh, you know, some, some basic functions, because, you know, sometimes people go into trading and, and they never stop, con you know, to consider a little bit how an economy really works and what is the actual function of the financial markets. The actual function of the financial markets is extremely, extremely important to any economy. It's, it's in essence sacred because what the financial markets are supposed to be doing when left to function freely is, formation. is they assign a risk and they, in essence, um, um, distribute capital where it should be, meaning they reward people, enterprises, states, countries that are prudent and fiscally re responsible by giving them the ability to uh, lend uh, money, you know, at low prices. And they punish those that uh, exercise the exact um, opposite, right? I mean, being fiscally responsible, um, taking huge risks that might, you know, um, end up blowing them up, etc. Now, when you have an outside force, central banks, in essence, beating up every single asset, no matter how risky it is, and taking prices down to ridiculous levels, and by prices now I mean yields, because don't forget the yield is a price, right? Yield is a price. So when they're beating down yields to ridiculous levels, what happens is what in Austrian economics is called malinvestments. You get capital chasing after bad investments um, because, you know, um, the outside forces make them appear appealing. So, you know, that builds a lot of um, inadequacies, uh, you know, a lot of distortions in a system. And the more you try to fix that by you know, by poisoning the system even further, the worse this happens. And at the end of the day, um, it all blows up. That is why, unfortunately, we have transformed the business cycle to a boom-bust cycle. That's not how it's supposed to be. The business cycle is not supposed to be a boom-bust cycle, a, a period that everything moves in only one direction, everything goes up. Concurrently, nobody pays attention to anything that, you know, even resembles fundamental analysis. And then one day, suddenly, everything blows up and goes to pieces. That's not how it's supposed to work. But unfortunately, that's how they've, they've made it function because, you know, it's completely distorted. It's, it's, it's absolutely decoupled from reality. So the more we try to solve a problem by administering uh, more of the problem, the more you're trying to make a drug patient, a, a drug addict, better by administering more drugs, the worse it's going to become. And that's what we're seeing here. And I think that at some point, by trying to keep the drug patient, the drug addict in this case, um, satisfied, you will end up administering a lethal dosage. God and damn, the pusher man. Yeah, and I, I think that that's the Definitely end game wolf. here. I, I think yeah. that's the end game here. We're going to administer the economy with a lethal dosage of monetary policy, and that's going to be it. Then we're going to start, you know, we're going to get ourselves in a totally different game. And unfortunately, social unrest is going to be, you know, 
the tipping point of you know what what's about to follow there, and inflation of course is going to be uh, you know the end game having to do with uh, you know the economy. Do you and think there'll be social know, unrest in Greece? I think there's going to be social unrest everywhere eventually everywhere. because yeah. because with with the methods the they are enforcing, there is absolutely nothing positive that can come because in essence. This, this, um, uh, these type of policies, what they do is they destroy middle class. And, you know, everybody knows that if you don't have a healthy middle class, there is absolutely no way you can have a healthy economy. Okay. So, anyhow, um, for those of you that are in the chat room, you know that I bought yesterday, uh, more or less at the close, I bought NASDAQ, one third of a position. Nice, um, I yeah. heard you also bought a, a bunch of meat in a freezer. Oh yeah, I have like two hundred liters of. Uh, so did, you got food. long um, <laughs> some meat in a freezer before you bought Nasdaq. Yeah, yeah, I have. Uh, you uh, know, what I have a, what a versatile stacked, guy! All right, stacked up Go at on. the moment. So <laughs> um, yeah, I bought some Nasdaq yesterday because uh, I was I was uh, what I mentioned yesterday. I bought Nasdaq a little bit lower from seventy three hundred. Um, and the reason I did that is, as I wrote in the chat room, is because we were testing the confluence of this descending channel here in the NASDAQ and the 61.8% yeah. FIB from the December 2018 low wow. to the all-time high that we recently had. I found myself uh, briefly out of the money. Uh, I had, as I wrote in the chat room, I had put my stop loss. I had actually put a stop loss here, of course, because, you, you know, I don't want to go to sleep even with one third of a position under such conditions and not have a stop loss because if I was awake, that would be a totally different thing. But I bought a little bit of NASDAQ and like one and a half hours later, I was, I was asleep. So um, as, I, as I wrote yesterday, my stop loss was at 6,900. So, you know, I was lucky it didn't get triggered. And my first target, the first target I was looking for was this horizontal resistance area. And then the next one, we're getting very close to it. It's at 7,650. So, you know, that's been working out very nicely. I, I, I already trailed my stop loss to break even. Uh, now, do I think that we found the low here? Absolutely not. I still believe this is going to prove to be a dead cut bounce. Now, let me reiterate here. Rebounds in bear markets can be very, very brutal. And if you remember, I mentioned that yesterday. I don't care if we close the day today 8% higher. I don't care if we're going to close the day another 8% higher tomorrow. My thesis that this rebound is eventually to be sold remains the same. So if you're looking for the S&P, which is more or less a barometer, the areas I would be looking as, a, as selling opportunities here would be 2,700 and above that roughly 2,900, 2,890, 10. Okay. So um, I find it quite likely that we might rebound towards there. Let's now delete. Or even further towards that area. In any case, no matter how strongly we rebound to these levels, I'm gonna, I will have definitely taken profits to that NASDAQ long position you know, before that. And I'm gonna be looking to sell again, as simple as that. So you know, personally, I'm not gonna care about how strongly this, you know, this market rebounds. I'm not going to really care about what they announce because they're definitely going to throw everything at it. Keep in mind that last time I checked yesterday, um, and Stelio, correct me if I'm right, the market was pricing in something like a 95% probability that at the 18th of March, the Fed is going to cut down to zero. Um, is that still the case, Stelio? No, oh, he's, he's not here. Um, so... Um, I think that that was the case. So we should expect that, you know, within the next week, we're going to get a lot more monetary stimulus, probably promises for fiscal stimulus. We've already seen a word from Germany, Europe saying that, um, you know, they're going to 
um, they're going to freeze in essence the deficit target so you know we can have some fiscal expansion i'm absolutely certain that trump is going to throw everything at it from both the monetary and uh, fiscal policy sides so definitely there's going to be a lot of positive market news coming out and the market is very likely to keep responding positively um okay 65 percent price team zero to 25 uh basis points target as of yesterday's close okay so 65 percent chance that they're going directly to zero um okay and more or less a given that they're going between 0 25 and 50 basis points in my opinion doesn't really matter at all does it really make a difference if they go directly to zero this month or 15 days after that or one month after that it makes absolutely no difference so the market might react higher of course anything that is risk correlated should follow higher <clears throat> but i don't think that any of that is going to fix the problem so i think there's going to be more downside coming as simple as that now those of you that are in the chat room also know that i don't anymore have a position in palladium because palladium actually collapsed yesterday from the highs of the day to the lows of the day it was 27 percent i actually booked that position making 25.2 percent profit um i did consider palladium you can see it here to be one of the biggest bubbles we've seen getting built during this period and you know what bubbles do is that they eventually pop and you know okay there's an example of a gr a very good call a very good trade and an excellent hold congratulations uh thank you although i almost lost the trade because uh, i actually well, i don't want to know just trailed, accept it. trailed my just stop say loss. thank you just say thank yeah, you say thank you i trailed my stop right. loss i got stopped out when we had that rebound okay. but then but then you know i i contemplated and you know uh one day later i i opened again there half a go. position short because i thought to myself you know you're you're stupid you shouldn't have trailed your stop loss uh this thing has no chance but collapsing lower following risk so at least i i i, I persuaded myself that's a pro move back. yeah uh, you overcame the psychology yeah, um, it didn't. It yeah. didn't feel that good when I was doing no, it. I can tell you that much. Yeah, yeah no. it didn't. Yeah, it didn't. That uh, makes you a and, pro. And I, I, I'm, you know, I don't feel that good saying that I felt it because I shouldn't have felt it. But as I said, I almost convinced myself to stay out of it, which would have yeah. been very, very stupid. Yeah, very, very stupid. Because because I you, had, cause in I the had past you have convinced yourself to stay out of it. Oh, and, yeah. and then watched opportunity cost. And you, to me, I don't know about you, Steve, but the opportunity cost is more painful to me than being psychologically, stopped out. Psychologically, absolutely. Than psychologically, being stopped out on a trade. Okay? Yeah, psychologically, it's very, very painful. It's, it's what they say as, 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 um, as an advice, which I think is one of the best advices in, uh, you know, for, for humans, for any type of situation, is that, you know, m most frequently... It's better regretting something you did than regretting for not doing something that you wanted to do. You know That's what I mean? That's a pearl. Yeah. So um, in this case, I, obviously, if you, if you put some thought on it, I'm not saying like, you know, do anything crazy that comes in mind just, you know, just because you don't want to stay out of it. But, you know, when, when you've done some analysis and I was absolutely certain that this bubble is going to pop. I mean, I had every reason to have a conviction in it and I almost... I almost uh, made a fraction of those profits. Anyhow, so it's matter. better it's better for me to regret knowing you guys than having never met you guys. <laughs> That's very true, actually. <laughs> uh, at least you get the chance to regret it, right? Yeah. Thanks, buddy. All right. Anyway, <laughs> uh, you know we have a question before I bring Samantha on, and it looks like we're getting a third drive up there on the silver gold ratio, Steve. Glenn oh, Jeffries yeah, is asking if it might be time to sell. I, I think we're, we could be there, the gold-silver ratio. First of all, before we go to the gold-silver ratio, let's see yeah. what has happened with gold. So gold yeah. came down once again to retest this broken 
triangles, trend line resistance and support. And so far it's holding. It's going to so, make a new high, I think, Steve, with a recovery in the market. Since the sell-off wasn't as deep, if we get a FIB retrace in the market, gold could go to your target again. 1723, if uh, it holds its low. It might. It might. From a risk-reward perspective, it definitely makes sense. Uh, but, you know, my conviction is not that high. As I've said even some days ago, yeah. I do own physical gold. I wasn't looking to be a buyer of, 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 of uh, gold in the financial markets because it was quite clear that the metal was fatigued having to do with how it was moving. I mean, momentum was clearly yeah, the uh, absent. Silver yeah. was clearly diverging oh, one, in, yeah. In, yeah. in behavior. So I had several signals telling me that despite me being very, very bullish in the medium to long term about the fate of gold, I didn't want to participate in, in, in you know, hoping there's going to be some upside in, in the short term. So do I think that it's moving to new highs from here? I think it, it might. I mean, definitely it I might. I think it will. If it holds 1550, uh, I but, think it will. That'll be the third drive. I'm there. not, I'm, I'm going to stay away from this market for now still. I mean, I own my physical and if all goes well. What's your address? I, you keep talking yeah. about, you own, what, uh, let's go to Steve's house and bring your, <laughs> and if all bring goes your, well, what are those uh, things that people use on the beach <laughs> to find coins? And, and if all goes well, my metal detectors. And if all yeah, goes yeah, well, let's go to Steve's with our metal detectors. My son will inherit it from me. Uh, you know, I don't want to have to use it. You know, um, but till he know, gets married. <laughs> Why? What happens after that? You know. What no, could, I don't. He'll give a. He'll give it to her. No. Nah. He'll make jewelry out of the, all the coins that you. Le your Le blood, sweat, and tears. Nah. So, I inherited some of that, not all of it. And trust yeah. me, uh, it's it's staying where it is. My uh, son is inheriting that. Jason will give uh, it all the way to women. Um, not if I have any saying in it. You won't be. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway. Crude, by all the right. way, also... also what under nor normal circumstances would, would look like an, a massive rebound. I mean, somebody would would look at this like, oh, almost 8% higher. Oh, my God. And then you look at the chart and it makes 8% look like a little blip, <laughs> right? Just look at this. Yeah. So do I think that the fact that crude is 8% higher today means that it's going to explode higher? Absolutely not. As far as I'm concerned... This can prove to be just something like this. Something like a triangle, for example. Yeah. Right? Or we might, you know, post a higher high uh, to, to have like an ABC. We might move all the way towards 38, even 40, and then continue lower. But... What I said yesterday hasn't changed, meaning we might see um, crude recovering with anything that is risk related, uh, but I still think that we will end up seeing lower prices um, in crude, uh, which is going to be a great, great buying opportunity. So I do think that crude is going to be an amazing buying opportunity, but not yet. All right, you have one minute for gold-silver ratio. Gold-silver ratio, yeah, sure, absolutely. So gold-silver ratio. Gold-silver ratio at... New highs here. New you know, highs. Steve, what's interesting about face is uh, you can tell um, that, you know, uh, this week was actually a great week for most of the team, okay? Can you imagine being in a chat room where people were you know, uber bullish and real long and, and what they've gone through in the last couple of weeks. Uh, I don't think they're cracking jokes like we are. L let me just tell you my story. I started the week by having lost 25% on crude on half of a position. Right. And I finished the week by having made 25.2% on, on half of a position on palladium. And in between, 
I've made some money trading other stuff like the Nasdaq now, etc. So it's been a good week. But bottom line, and I, I really feel strongly about it, and, and you should consider it. These are the conditions under if, if you want to be a trader, you, you, you should be thriving. So, you know, don't be afraid of risk uh, if you know how to do it properly. Meaning, of course, you're going to adjust the positions based on volatility, right? I mean, imagine if I had a full position in crude. Of course, somebody can say, imagine if you had a full position in, in palladium. But, you know, something, if you have a full position that it ends up losing 25%, you might not have the ability to have a full position at any time in the future ever again. So bottom line is, you know, these markets are moving. They, when the market is strongly moving, it usually works very nicely with technicals. So these are the type of markets that, you know, you should be looking forward to. And all, all I know is anyone that's been listening to us the last few months uh, weren't long spoos. Oh, yeah. And, and if you were, sorry to say that, but, you know, you only have your bl yourself to blame. Okay. All right. Well, uh, Steve, great trading week again. I think I said that to you last Friday because you were short for the decline, most of the decline. So, uh, oh, yeah, I've done, now yeah. that I recouped back the losses of uh, crude with one trade, I, I've yeah. done very well during the past month. Very well. All right. No complaints. Well, congratulations. And uh, it looks like uh, we're getting a lot more members now because people realize they can't just sit in spiders and be a genius. So anyway, uh, I think uh, Michael Bear said it, and he's very right. He believes that during this bear market, uh, the passive investment bubble is going to yeah. uh, burst as well. It because a is. lot of people thought that throwing money on indices and ETFs, ETFs uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. is going, going to be a winner simply because everything just went up. And everything just went down. So I think now the market is going to go back to realizing that there is place uh, for what we call value invest investing, right? I mean, there are things you should be buying even when stock markets get destroyed. And there are things you should be selling even when the stock markets are soaring. Sir Isaac Newton, law of gravity <laughs> Indeed. reasserts itself. <laughs> All right, Absolutely. Steve, stay healthy, you and your family, you, buddy. And uh, Samantha, I'm going to get you set up here now. Have a great weekend, everybody. It's been a long time since uh, you and I have had a chance to talk, and I'm unmuting you. Samantha, how are you? Welcome back to FACE. Hey, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. can see your... Uh, see your screen, Samantha. So it's been such a, a long time. My fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I own it. You know, uh, we forgiven. We had a little, I, we had a little so... lovers quarrel, and, and <laughs> look at you know, and we <laughs> we've made up, and you know, it, I. You I know what? To... There's always two sides to a to the market, right? There, there... Yes, <laughs> yes, there is, and I'm I know so that you. I know you excel in uh, bear moves. And I just know that you were probably really having some great trading opportunities that you were showing people and doing for yourself. So what do you make out of uh, the last couple of weeks? Uh, where are we? I'm interested in your senior radar screen here. Well, thank you, for first of all, for inviting me. And it is true. I am actually uh, much better at calling tops than bottoms, but that's because bottoms are that uh, tops of the process. Bottoms are typically an event. And in that particular case, I have more time to find divergences. Yeah. So it is easier for me to look for um, tops. And that could be in any time frame, honestly, because um, I do the chase, the swing, the trend trading. But this is very much important for this particular um, drawdown that we've had. So I don't know if people know who I am, but I want to just let you know quick. I do Go have a, a Twitter site, which obviously you and I follow each other, and it's where I do post some of my macro um, thoughts because that's the backdrop I use against this technical, you know, drilling into um, trade ideas, absolutely. And 
volatility is my thing. I'm looking for volatility to reprice everything. And in this market, we have our fair share. So this is my, my Twitter cha channel, at Samantha LaDuke, for those who might not know. I also have a YouTube channel. And in fact, I did a, um, an online presentation just last week on exactly what I saw in the divergence to time this with precision. So literally just play by play by play, day by day. Um, I think it's important also the option market and not the, uh, the usual retail unusual option activity, but at the quant, the vol strategies, the CTAs and using that, um, the gamma positioning to better size up um, when you know we're being pulled higher and when we're being pulled lower. So I definitely so, recommend checking that out. Okay, so Amanda, I saw that first tweet that you had out and you said your most important market tell is uh, has triggered a financial crisis. Yes, it has, and I pinned that. So I actually um, am what kind of- What is the tell? Well, I will, I'm gonna show you that. So that's okay. actually what I was kind of getting to. I just, in this YouTube thing, you're like, I'm really bullish IPOs, bullish, bullish, bullish. And then December 18th, I'm like, nope, not anymore. And in fact, I tweeted on the 18th that I thought the market was going to break. Um, and it, Friday was it. Next day was actually it. It was the, the yen was just not performing the way that it should. Um, and so I do have some free stuff here that goes into explaining what I saw. But yeah, this is what I wanted to go over today because I don't think this is safe. Even though we're having a really nice bounce this morning after the you know Fed bazooka yesterday, um, this is definitely still not over. And I'm going to go back a little bit. Market thoughts. This is what I post for clients actually every day. And right now, my two recurring themes the past month, liquidity liquidation, which is better, like which is going to win this boxing round. Okay, so you know what's been going on with the Fed, we don't need to rehash what they did yesterday, uh, what they've done with repo, what they've done with, uh, you know, emergency rate cut, what they're likely to do on Wednesday when they announce the next <laughs> set of cuts. Um, yes. I'm going to assume that your audience is quite intelligent and knows what's going on in regards to Fed liquidity, global yeah. liquidity, Everyone's easing. Everyone's trying to infuse liquidity to stabilize market. Guess what? Liquid liquidation right now is beating liquidity. So yesterday was a nice tell where you could see that, you know, algo um, bounce on news of the Fed bazooka, the QE, and um, 101.5 trillion also in repo support next three days. So that's just not enough. I think, I think liquidation has been the theme. Um, I saw it on Tuesday, uh, the 25th, and it was massive. And I'll show you what I saw from a retail perspective, because, you know, I'm a retail trader. Um, yeah. I actively trade for they're, a living and I support they clients. They were buying dips same. for two weeks, right, Samantha? They were, this whole thing from November until February was just a sold to you market. I kept saying it over and over again, but it was very productive, especially um, in my particular trading room. We were trading IPOs just three months solid, November, December, January, but it turned into, of course, uh, the Corona crash, right? The coronavirus crash. So right now my whole thing was, okay, this is serious. I said back on January 22nd that this was going to be the story of the year of 2020. And now the real test would be, could Cowbell, you know, in that boxing match, if you will, take out COVID-19 or would <laughs> COVID-19 overpower Cowbell? So it's round by round by round, right? Who's going to win? Um, we're, we're like maybe- What's a Cowbell? Rounds. Cowbells, the Fed, global oh, central okay. bank. Oh, okay, the Fed's yeah. a cowbell, all right. All yeah, right. that kind of cowbell. Okay. So I don't need to tell you right now which is winning. We just <laughs> dropped 28%, right, in three weeks. Big, big, big deal. So we have a major um, liquidation event occurring, and underneath the surface as well with repo, and, and you know, folks are just saying, bye-bye, I'm out of here. But there's some things that I think were kind of interesting um, Early on, I was trying to figure out, I didn't see this as a V-shape at all, and I'll show you why. But I also wasn't, you know, it's going to be its own thing. Is it 2008? This, this sentiment, I kind of do this overview um, in my head and also for clients. we got sentiment, technical, fundamental, macro, intermarket. I also do the quant. 
um, uh, read, I'm not a quant trader, but I study it so that I can be on the right side, if you will. Yeah. This is a human issue driving financial stress. I like that. Yeah. 2008 was a financial issue, issue that caused human stress. This one is worse. So I do not think that this is, um, this is a very tradable bounce, but this is not a safety. This is not, the markets are broken. It's not safe. So, so do you tell people to go to 90 day T bills and just roll them, especially since oh, this cash, week? Cash and a multi-currency account, preferably. So oh, technical. yeah? Oh, yeah. So multi-currency account. Oh, where do you do that? <laughs> where do you do that? Let's go into, let me get through this, this post. All right. You know what? I'm just going to let you go. <laughs> because I know we don't have much time. So, and no, go ahead. Opening. Make it a lecture, Samantha. No, go I ahead. want to get through this because I want you to <laughs> kick it apart after. Feel All right. Free. All so right. technically, the rate of change of selling is unprecedented. Market is down, obviously, in very quick order. This is, um, these are price insensitive sellers. That's my contention. The fundamental backdrop, no one knows where's fair value. I'm pricing in the impact of COVID-19 to company earnings, growth, even the policy costs of what's happening right now. The, the macro, clear liquidity crisis. And it could, could lead to solvency crisis. It will definitely take some folks out. I'm not just talking hedge funds um, in the risk parity trade that has been unwound and is still unwinding. VIX is still bid. That chart has done nothing wrong. So let's yeah. update some charts, big picture, because I think Recession Watch is actually on my radar and I want it to be on other people's radar because they might not kind of say, ah, oh, it's a distant problem. I think it's gonna be here sooner than later. And this is one chart that I have you know, shown Vertical lines, recession, steepening of the yield curve, flattening. We are really, really close to moving above this zero line, which is nice. Intermarket tell my stuff, right? This is not a macro. I can listen to Raul Powell for all the macro. This is my intermarket tell that says it's not safe. Okay, so with the uh, yield curve beginning to steepen, some people yeah. would say, well, that's good. Um, that means we're recovering. We're not inverting. Yeah, that's not really good. So, <laughs> well, okay, well, I'm just saying. Watch. Go ahead. So, uh, this is not really uh, so helpful when the, the initial yield curve inversion you know, takes place and then trying to time the, the market. What I actually like is a little bit more intermarket, which says, you know what, we're actually going to roll over even more. And this triggered this is one of the things that triggered recently this week so we have been in nice you know big picture i'm talking about for trend trading okay. right trend is broken now that's basically what i want to get that's what you use rate of change for correct another thing i use i love this gap spx earnings guide and if you go all the way back here to late 90s and this is this was pinned on my um uh, tweet but You'll see it here. You can see that eight times out of nine, this has been a fabulous trend trading timing vehicle. Now, remember, I chase, you know, hourly, you know, look at swing trades for weeks and months, but I'm talking big picture. Is the trend broken? Because most people have been trying to buy every dip in the past three weeks and they're getting hurt. So my point is, well, we're kind of at an inflection point, right? It looks like it's going to tip over. What on earth, you know, maybe we just pop right back up. Earnings are going to be hunky-dory. Well, come on. We know they're not going to be. Take a look at Goldman. They just revised a negative EPS year over year for the next three quarters. So what do you think is going to happen to my Gap SPX intermarket chart? It's going to roll over as well. So I think the, the recession watch, people don't really put, I mean, um, economists, they have their own models. It's not what I use. I'm looking at the steepening of the curve, I'm looking at my rate of change, I'm looking at negative EPS growth with my gap um, chart analysis, and probably you've seen this before, the unemployment claim in regards, if I can pop it up, ah, it's not opening. Anyway, this is intonating higher, and we know we're gonna have higher next next month's reading. There's, there's not a question. It's going to go higher for March. It's going to go higher for April. 
we have layoffs, we have just retrenchment yeah. as it relates to company um, uh, safety. So this all leads me to a very, aside from the macro considerations, this leads me to be very, very cautious that recession is here. We, the market just doesn't know it yet. So okay. let's move on to when you asked about the tells. So I do this um, work in SPX, and it's my stock bond volatility ratio work. Yeah. And I warned clients back in February, and actually I go over this every single day, but I warned clients that this divergence of VIX above the stock bond ratio was very, very negative and worrisome, right? So that's one of the reasons why I called this a sold to you rally, like underneath the surface, it was in danger. I had a dozen charts that showed massive divergence. So timing it is, is obviously where you have to go on narrow, very, very narrow time frames. but that's what I do. I, I love playing volatility. So this is an initial stock bond volatility ratio, Justin, as an example, where I warned we're in trouble. This is where we are today. And I don't know if you can see this, yeah, but, we okay. So I told clients that if this ratio gets above the 65 moving average, okay, it is short at will. Literally, it's what I wrote, short at will. Nothing's gonna be held down. When this gets above the 200 week, that's a financial crisis. And I have not seen that since 2008. So okay. that's, that's a big, big deal. And that's when after the 20% drawdown, it was Monday, this past Monday, I was depressed because it triggered. And I said, you know what? This isn't done yet. We're not actually gonna have a correction, just a correction. We're gonna have a financial crisis. And I'm gonna hold to that because my intermarket tells me we're there. My recession watch indicators tell me we're there. Look at credit just from an intermarket standpoint. Yeah. I can go over macro reasons, but this was, is treasury high. Huh? Yeah. yeah, junk. Yeah. This, yeah. No, it's a junk. It's high yield. So yeah. it's that rotation, you know, out of high yield mm -hmm. into treasuries, right? You can see what's happened with lovely TLT. But yeah. my point was, this is not at all looking good for oil, which, and if it's not good for oil, it's not gonna be good for the, the bond holders, the credit markets that you know hold this debt. I was very worried that this was going to explode higher and I did not know the oil war was gonna be declared by Saudi Arabia and Russia would join in and the Arab Emirates. <laughs> right. But this is where it is today. Yeah. That's not correction territory. That's price insensitive liquidation. Panic. That's panic in the credit markets. Yeah. Now I can show you actual yields, of course, have also been spiking and spreads and all that jazz. But my point Even is- Even TLT had a lousy week in face of all this carnage. No asset is safe. And I wrote that the past few weeks. No asset is safe, not even gold. Yeah. No question. They're going to sell gold as a collateral. It's collateral when they have margin calls, whatever. The Fed, I think, was behind this recent one. I have a tweet on that. Here's another thing, Brett, this is what I use as my bread and butter, okay? This is big picture mm -hmm. and you can't really tell, so I'm gonna bring you on a smaller picture. And by the way, we're in bounce territory, but this- Yeah, wow. Yeah. Not like others. This is the NYSC composite index. This, I just, every day I'm looking at this stuff, right? And okay. I have a, a particular relationship with, with intermarket analysis. It's my thing. This is not like the others. And I'm talking about any other correction or crisis. It doesn't even look like 2008, it's worse. Yeah. So I was looking at this, you know, kind of head and shoulders up here, warning clients. That was a big deal back in January, 2018. Yeah. I doubled my account in two weeks because no other time had it been this elevated. Guess what? We tagged and came right back down. It's not done. Yeah. It's not okay. done. So I'm quickly trying to get through because I know. No, it's um, good. Okay. Great. Uh, here, this is another kind of uh, thing that people don't necessarily look at, but I look underneath um, for patterns as well as divergences. So Morningstar reversal on this uh, cumulative four-week new high, new low chart. It happens to be from TC2000. The other stuff you saw was in stock charts. I also use you know, charting in my trading platforms, but these are, you know, 
kind of unique, if you will, to this platform. I, this was a bottom, a morning star reversal in that Christmas Eve massacre, right? We went v shape yeah. Moonshin called the banks. Okay, Moonshin called the banks a few days ago. Didn't help. Yeah, they, they were at the White House saying yeah. how strong they were. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, they yeah, were really what? there saying, look, President Trump, uh, we've underwritten a lot of uh, shale oil debt. And not just shale, but it's also Everything. the fact that they don't want to give it out because they don't trust they're going to get it back. So this is, by the way, on the floor right now. If you look fast forward, this is yep. the 100 week. You can use it just like any other moving average, right? I mean, I chart everything. This morning star reversal, island, blah, blah, blah. Morning star <laughs> reversal, island reversal on a daily. It is all the way down here and it's been straight down. Never yep. ever happened like that. And I wrote, everyone thinks this gap on Monday is gonna get filled. They're so happy. There is nothing, nothing relatively speaking for a floor there's just there's nothing and then of course i said forced selling meets natural selling so the ctas of course they get their levels where you know they're negative gamma they have to selling begets selling same darn thing in the natural world where we're like hmm that's that's not good <laughs> and we're not talking unusual option activity from retail folks you know, or small institutions, but the largest group of assets under management, they're even slower look back period. So once that, you know, uh, it, it's just a waterfall and we saw it, it literally, it, it, it produced exactly what I feared. And I, every single day I was massive. I saw massive distribution and every single day I told clients in my live trading room, do not cover. There's no reason to cover. I see no floor, zip, zero. So the other thing was this gold SPX intermarket analysis, which is literally, again, pattern recognition with a ratio. And I said, hmm, guess what that means? Gold could even stay where it is and spy falls and spy falls. So you know where this is right now. It's way yeah. up here, right? Yeah. So the, the point is when you have all of these kind of um, – coalescing and you know at the same time there's this convergence of fear well volatility this is actually um the three month but it doesn't matter you get the idea volatility is really a big deal i cautioned when we went into backwardation which by the way some portfolio managers are wicked smart as soon as volatility goes into backwardation they liquidate and they will go back into the stock market when we're back in contango. Now, I cautioned, this could be several months. And I said, literally, this could be several months on the 25th. Don't think that this is gonna be just a, a V shape. I don't think so. And I had also cautioned because we did an overshoot. I love overshoots, right? Like you can look at the dollar yen and you can see where it was a complete head fake back on the 18th, 19th, 20th. Beautiful. It's in other words, the first move is the wrong one and then it has the energy to explode you can see that with a dollar a few days ago looked like it was going to break uh-uh knew that thing was going to bounce back up so this is also the outliers revert with velocity and that's where i go into my volatility now look at this you can't even see the scale anymore okay that was the 25th this is now <laughs> yeah. look what it did to my axes um and look how low this is that's not like the others so I am contend also we closed on the lows. We are obviously still in, um, I think, uh, panic mode. It looks very orderly, but it's really not. So I presented this to clients where I think we're gonna have a little bounce. What do we have in this morning? Okay, this was just taken. Um, my price target for this week was 2,400. It originally was 2,666. And then I saw what was happening under the surface and I said, nope, revising that, 2,400 for SPX. Now this is bounce worthy. That's all I'm given this market. Five to 10%, okay, fine. And if we get some kind of central bank, you know, debt jubilee over the weekend, we can go higher. And we got a wall of puts that need to be rolled or covered, which can uh, by the CTAs and the quant, you know, the vol strategists that have, you know, been playing this, this VIX explosion and are actually unwinding that risk parity trade. Um, I think that that 
could actually create fuel for a sizable bounce into options expiration. But Which then is when? I, next week, next Friday. Okay. And but the debt uh, jubilee is going to be on what? Giving people time, like on it's, student it's, loans, et cetera? I don't know what they're going to do. This is just way too big a problem. Um, yeah. it's so, they, okay, so here's the question, Samantha. If this is worse with so everything way, that we've seen mm -hmm. than 2008, why are we talking about recession? Maybe we should uh, bring up the D. I I don't, I can't do that. So my crystal ball is three to six months. I'm really good in that time frame. Okay. I'm not. I, but it's worse. It, it is worse, but I'm just telling you, I'm not good with That's that time PR. frame. That's PR. That's public relations. All right, go ahead. So my last point, because I know the market's opening, you want to kick me off. The big risk and very real risk, I told my clients yesterday morning, and I also, um, public service, if you will, because I think it's Oh, yeah, market holiday? Oh, my God, absolutely. And the biggest, of course, as an option trader, I'm like, be aware. <laughs> this is not going to be good for short duration. Add some wicked time on that. And more importantly, if we do close, and then let's say we're, we're closed for two, three, four weeks, right? Trying to get um, COVID-19, quote unquote, under control. When they open it up, they're only going to open it up on good news. So anyone who is strongly positioned with puts, right, or short, is going to have their head taken off when the market opens, potentially. That did happen, you know, um, in 9-11. Yeah. It right. happened in 9-11 when we opened, you know, days later. So yeah. I, I used this this morning, actually, where there were hundreds monkeys. and hundreds of, of monkeys in Thailand going after one banana. And that one banana represents liquidity. And those monkeys are the bankers. Be careful. I really think right now with COVID, it is capital. This is what I wrote clients exactly. This is exactly what I wrote clients. Capital preservation meets life preservation, and with that, know what you own. Okay, so Samantha, great presentation. Uh, what are you doing personally about this coronavirus? Uh, social distancing uh, with all the money that you've made in the markets? Do you have a bunker somewhere? <laughs> no, I don't even have a mask. <laughs> okay. No, so, I think uh, this, what, what do you think is going to, uh, do you, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you looked into it. What's your view? I live, oh my God, I have studied this and I warned about this in January. It's ridiculous. But here's the deal. I really think that um, this is uh, not panic worthy from the personal standpoint it, until, it, you know, it, it reaches us individually and our families, then we're going to be in a whole bunch of pain and suffering. I am trying to stay focused on the capital, the, the preservation, the warning of um, safeguard so people don't have that added stress. Does that make sense? So yeah. for me, I live in a bubble, you know, same, same house. I walk my dog. I don't get out much. <laughs> um, I'm not so, and I'm young and I'm healthy, all that. Okay. My, Fear is not, and my anxiety is not around contracting COVID-19. I think I will. I think what a large percentage of the population will, and then a smaller percentage will be seriously sick, and then a smaller percentage still will be will die. And it's real. And it's the ineptitude of what's going on right now with political leadership is extremely frustrating. And I don't know what else to tell you there. I don't is have- Is this a, a repeat of the, uh, like a hundred year cycle of the Spanish flu? Pandemic. Yes, and there's a you know there's really a wonderful um, uh, video. I, I I sent it to my son. My son sent it to me, and uh, at the same time, like an email, it was hysterical by jo by Joe Rogan, and he. Oh, yeah. Yes, I also retweeted that. It's a fabulous. Um, the first fifteen minutes it goes off, yeah. and then it comes back on. But I think that that is the awareness we don't have is the in, the intensity of this disease, but also the impact on our economy. And of course, I think life preservation meets, yeah. meets capital preservation. And my focus has been, yeah, it, it isn't um, getting sick um, right now. It's the added pressure of having a very sick market. Um, and yep. for those who are traders, my clients and, and money managers, my clients, this is I want to make them aware just as much as the 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 impact of the disease itself personally. I'm not a health practitioner. I, yeah. <laughs> I'm a market analyst and this is my, this is my thing. 
Well, Samantha, Corona, Corona, fear that I'll own you. Born in a <laughs> lab in China. Spreading well, I don't want you. that. No, I don't think that. I don't want, I actually don't think that it's um, worth our time to say it's made in China at all. It doesn't do us Why? any good. Why? Because I think xenophobia and racism is bad. And okay. I think. Uh, lately, don't you think the streets of Hong Kong are pretty quiet now? I think that this is a financial crisis and it's also yep. a personal responsibility crisis. I think we have to um, help each other and not pile on to the blame game because then nothing will get done and we will hurt ourselves even more. Okay. And uh, do you think we'll have elections this fall in the midst of this? Oh, I don't. I think, um, I can't think that far ahead. Honestly, I did okay. say that a few weeks ago that this what? was uh, Trump's card that he could cancel elections and secure himself, you know, some more time, but it's, it's too far out there right now. And I'm not going to make, um, I think it's a high probability, but right now I'm, that's n the, not in my, um, go with your strengths, Samantha LeDuc, exactly. <laughs> go with your strengths, uh, Samantha knows markets and, uh, encourage everyone to follow her. And as you could tell, uh, she's very passionate about it, uh, has conviction about everything she says, and uh, was nice talking to you again, my trading warrior sister. Oh, thank I, you so much, Dale. Have, have a wonderful weekend and be yeah. safe out there. Yeah, much health and many pips to you and your people. Thank you, so kindly, that, sir. Th all right, so everyone don't re remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings, stay healthy, stay safe and stay with Forex Analytics. I'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Adios. Bye. Bye-bye.